Okay, uh, so welcome again if you've just joined us to this session all together in reflective practice with uh, Patricia Ramos and Ulla Stastik. Um, I'm going to start as well uh, streaming onto Facebook because I know lots of people um, <clears throat> can also watch us there. <coughs> Excuse me while I do this. Can we? Great, we're now live on Facebook as well. Fantastic. Um, so. Okay, so I, before I pass over to our two presenters, then I'd like to, to tell you a little bit about them. So uh, Patricia Ramos is originally from Uruguay, where she worked as a primary and secondary English teacher. She now has 25 years of experience teaching young learners and business English. Uh, she is currently doing her um, TESOL diploma qualification. And Ulla Stastik comes from Poland and started teaching EFL there before moving to Spain to teach. She has also worked as a counsellor in summer camps and as a director of studies in the UK. In October 2020, she started her Diploma TESOL course in Barcelona. So uh, highly qualified, very experienced presenters here. We're really lucky to, to have you. And I'm going to pass over to you, if that's OK. okay. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Can you share the screen, Tricia? Yes, I will. Second. Right. OK, here we go. Okay, so once again, hello everybody. Uh, we are very happy to have you here with us today. My name is Ula. And I'm Patricia. And we would like to share with you our experience uh, with reflective practice in teaching. So, oh, the next slide. In this session, we will tell you what reflective practice is and why we find it important in teaching and we'll tell you a little bit more about uh, the approach we are using in our professional life that is collaborative uh, reflective practice but to begin with i would like to show you uh, a picture of me um, doing one of my favorite physical activities well if you look closer at this photo you can't really say um, that i am enjoying what i am doing in fact, uh, it was a very tough race. It wasn't one of my uh, first races. I've already had experience um, and I was training quite a lot. Um, it was just five kilometers, um, but I started with a very good pace. Uh, I was just carried away by the crowds and the support um, of the people who came to watch the runners. And then I find it really hard to keep up uh, with the pace. This picture was taken in Saragossa uh, nine years ago, maybe even 10 now in 2013. <laughs> but when you look at another picture that was taken um, five years later, here I am captured uh, reaching the finishing line in a half marathon, so 20 running 21 kilometers. And you can see uh, my face. I am much uh, happier than I was running just five kilometers. You might think how I moved from uh, kind of suffering and uh, running these five kilometers and then actually enjoying my 21 uh, kilometers. Well, it was not yet. <laughs> it was about uh, running more and buying more professional uh, equipment, better trainers and everything. But it wasn't just this. Uh, it was more about conscious uh, training and being more aware how to prepare well uh, for running. And I didn't do it alone at all. In the picture on the left, you can see uh, I you can see me with uh, other runners. I went for a some uh, for a for a running camp in the mountains, and together with fellow runners, <clears throat> coaches, dietitians, we analyzed my past races, 
we had lots of tests done to find the best equipment for us. We talk about the diet and everything that could uh, work best for every, every individual person in the camp. I also, in the picture on the right, um, you can see this is me actually in Barcelona with my small uh, running group. Um, these are my uh, also my fellow runners, my friends, and um, we motivate each other on a cold winter day. It gets cold in Barcelona as well. Uh, when we don't feel like uh, getting out, uh, especially to go for a run, we say, ah, come on, let's go. And then uh, I felt uh, we felt kind of obliged. We have to we have to go for a training. Well, you might think why I'm telling you all this when you came here uh, to listen about reflective practice in teaching. Uh, well, I'm telling you this because um, I wanted to show you that we reflect in many uh, different everyday situations. My running here is is a very good example. And it's not only about running. We sometimes think, okay, the, the cake I was making didn't really work out well. So um, didn't turn out well. So what can I do? We ask our friends for some tips and advice. We watch YouTube for uh, tutorials. Uh, we look for some advice on the internet. As I said, when it's about running, about making a cake or teaching as well sometimes we want to more uh, have okay well how do, can I teach conditionals in a more um, uh, fun and entertaining uh, way so in this session we'll be telling you about reflective practice in teaching uh, as a way of professional development and for now off to Patricia thank you Okay, so what is reflective practice? So our jobs take a big part of our day. Do we give a lot of thought to what happens in our day, in our teaching, why things work out and why things don't work out? So today what we want to do is to bring reflective practice a bit closer to you and tell you what has what influence it has on our professional lives. So let's try to define what reflection in teaching is. Here you have some um, four definitions, yeah? Please, I would like you to write in the chat box which one you agree most with. So you can write one, two, three, and four. That's it. So we'll, um, I'll give you two, let's say one minute, two minutes. Look at the chat. Okay, one and four. All right. Two is a basic one. Okay. Two, two, four. One, one and four, four. Okay, one, two, four. Okay, <laughs> we have a lot. Four, four, four. Good, all. Mm -hmm. Good, all, all of them, three, two and four. All right, thank you very much. Well, so the idea here that all these definitions describe in a more or less precise way what we believe reflection practice is. So however, if you notice it, we order them this way on purpose. From the most general one, number one, to the most specific one, number four. And we want to, what we want to emphasize here is that reflection shouldn't, shouldn't just be thinking about the experience, but it should include thinking about circumstances, your context, thinking of the solutions of a problem or your issues, trying out solutions, and ideally, as we can read in the last definition, yeah, um, also consulting external source for, sources for better dealing with the problems. So let's continue. Right, how can we do this? We like to know about your experience, yeah, with reflective practice, and hopefully it's not like, oh, sorry. This picture here, like the cat. Yes, our friend, the cat. So please tell us briefly in the chat book what your, exper your experience with reflective practice has been so far. 
And do you do it? If so, how? How often? If not, why not? So here there aren't any uh, right or wrong answers. Just we'd like to know uh, your experience a little bit. Let's have a look at the chat. Okay, video in my lessons to evaluate my output after the lesson. I use it often, okay. Expressing ideas and feelings. Too, uh, too much reflection cube. I often use it, especially when something good or not so good happens after the lessons, always, okay. I used to write a teacher's log, okay, good. I look back at the lesson all the time, but not enough. I use it a lot, trying to find out my weekend points, okay? Picking scenarios outside the topic context, asking questions from my own, own self and journaling, asking students, reflection, always. Okay, good, good. Thank you very much for all these beautiful answers. All right, now off to Ula. Oops, sorry. <laughs> all right, so... Reflective practice, uh, you might see, think, how, how can we do it? Yes, and some of the ideas that you mentioned in the chat uh, are great. Um, you mentioned journaling, writing a journal after lessons, uh, recording uh, your lessons, uh, doing peer observations. Uh, nobody mentioned, I haven't seen any answer like this, but this is also a way of reflective practice or doing uh, action research. However, uh, with all these ways of doing reflective practice, we might encounter some problems, or at least we, we did. First of all, they might be difficult to arrange and time consuming. For example, when it comes to um, my teaching context, I teach in a language school in uh, Spain and all the teachers teach at the same time. So if I wanted to do peer observation, um, it's a little bit complicated because I need to ask a member of the management team to cover me and uh, Sometimes they were not that willing to do it. I, I was actually doing some peer observation uh, last year. It was quite tricky to arrange. Uh, time consuming as well, because writing a journal, uh, I'm glad that you, those of you who do uh, find time. But for me, I was going home after my teaching day and then busy. I was busy with lunch or dinner, taking my dog for a walk. And then the momentum was gone and uh, I didn't have time to like do it on a regular basis. Very often, uh, these ways of doing reflective practice are also prescribed and not chosen by the teachers. And that way we don't really feel motivated to do them. And with some of them, teachers are left alone basically. So if you record your lessons, unless you decide to uh, work with somebody and rewatch your lesson, then it's, it's you. And because of that, it's, you might not be able to identify a problem or the issue that is taking place in your class. And what we think is the biggest issue, however, is that teachers might not know how to reflect and be critical about what is happening in the lessons. Therefore, uh, the approach that we uh, would like to promote in this session and the approach that we've been uh, trying to incorporating, uh, incorporate in our professional life as a, a way to develop professionally is a collaborative reflection. And this can be having a, this can include having a critical friend. And this is mainly what our session is about or uh, organizing group meetings. We won't really talk about it today as there is no time, well, but maybe there will be another uh, occasion in the future. Uh, for now, off to Patricia. Okay, so why is reflective practice important for us? Yeah, um, We are going to look at some reasons that we found that is the most personal way of teacher development because it's, our, it's based on our teaching. Yeah, We do our research. And that therefore hands authority to us teachers. So it's more bottom-up approach, as Ulla mentioned, it's not imposed by any manager or director of studies. It, it comes from us. 
It helps us make things happen if we put things into practice. It helps us being updated with theory as well. We research, we find information, we make things happen in class, and therefore we are motivated and we deal better with burnout. This is something that I want to highlight because teaching uh, for us, our teaching careers has been a roller coaster. So, you know, you have ups and downs. Sometimes you feel super motivated. Sometimes you feel very down. So that re being reflective help us uh, be motivated. And obviously, as a consequence, it leads to teacher development. So, and why collaboration in reflective practice? Well, because we get the opportunity to examine, support, critique each other's work in a safe and supportive environment. But when we say critique, I don't, we don't mean criticizing other people's job, not on the contrary. It's just to give a helpful hand and to give a different perspective on issues that are happening in our classes. Also, collaboration with colleagues increase the likelihood that a teacher will be successfully reflective. And that adds, uh, we have feelings of autonomy, empowerment, and confidence in our professional development. So all of that we have, we, with this collaboration, what we get is a person that you trust, that you can work with, and you can open up, yeah? So, Let's continue. Our, let's talk about our experience with collaborative reflective practice. Obviously, it has been very positive. Um, as we mentioned before, and Joe mentioned, we work in different contexts. Uh, even though we have similar experience, uh, experiences, Ola works in a language school. I work mainly with business people so or business classes. So even though that situation that you might say, oh, well, you've got different teaching contexts. Well, it doesn't matter because we discuss particular issues together. We motivate each other. We work on lesson planning as well. We share a lot of internet and book findings. Uh, and we try to research on certain things that we come across in, in our classes. And so we encourage each other action and we reflect on these actions. And this is amazing yeah and of course we give emotional support when uh, we got these ups and downs in this um, in our career all right let's continue off to Ula now oh no sorry that's me <laughs> that's me oh no sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> right okay thank you <laughs> So we would like to tell you what are the main benefits, what we uh, got uh, thanks to reflective practice. For me, one of the biggest uh, benefits was that I became more confident. I became more confident when it come when it comes to experimenting with new ideas with my students because uh, sometimes I would consult Patricia like, "What do you think? Do you think it could it could work?" and maybe she would give me some tips as well um, or any reflection on uh, what she thinks about the activities that I've prepared. Uh, another uh, very important thing is that we found new ways of uh, doing things. As you already know, and we've been saying this, uh, we've been teaching for, uh, we've been teachers for a very long time. And sometimes we do uh, certain activities, games, and we have certain routines that we've been doing successfully over years and years. However, uh, when we discuss and, and we figure out that, oh, you actually do it a very similar way, but maybe I can tweak it uh, a bit. And then sometimes it turns out that, wow, we found a completely new, a completely new energy in our lessons because of this little uh, change to the routine. Uh, thanks to our um, friendship, this collaboration, we've also identified issues we weren't aware which took place in our classes uh, because we, we started discussing, well, my students are very loud. I, don't, I can't identify where the problem comes from, but uh, we started talking and then we started coming back uh, 
to the whole lesson and ah okay so that's where the problem lies um and we've triggered the exchange of ideas uh it's easier at least for us it's easier when you can just verbalize your ideas and share even the crazy ones uh um or innovative ones with the person who understands you because we are kind of in the same boat and because of this because of this exchange of ideas and the will to try out uh, new things we've maintained the motivation um to improve and we've learned how to attenuate the effects of burnout uh, experimenting with our students and having a little helper or supporter uh, in our in each other next slide thank you well you might think how we do it uh, apart from being, be, being colleagues and working together uh, at different speeches at conferences we also uh, we are also friends so we often meet just to go on holidays or for a drink or for dinner and we might chat away about things not related to teaching although I think like probably on every every time we meet we end up talking about uh, teaching however to give structure to our reflective practice meeting, we prepared this list of points uh, based on the article written by Steve Mann and Steve Walsh in 2017, uh, just so we stay focused and um, and we and we managed and so that we can follow this list. Uh, we don't always follow it very strictly. It depends what the problem or what the issue is or what we want to discuss um but this is our starting point and then depends where we go sometimes we discuss the first two points uh sometimes we start somewhere at the end the points are here we try not to reflect immediately we give ourselves time but obviously we don't wait for too long because as i mentioned with journaling sometimes for me if i didn't do the teaching journal immediately after the class the momentum was gone and i was like okay well this class wasn't great maybe it was me maybe it was the students bam i try to focus on the next day uh so when we meet and we have our reflective practice meeting we try to describe the facts and also we try to recall how we felt um at the same time we also try to remember how our uh, students uh, reacted to the situation how they behaved and then this is i think the crucial uh point here we ask uh, questions we ask questions uh, we ask ourselves questions but we also share those questions with friends and all together we brainstorm answers uh, and solutions and it's much easier to discuss the solutions with um, another person this just done just being alone with everything then we talk how we feel about it and what we've learned from the experience and then uh, obviously we plan as we mentioned in the beginning you know, uh, when we showed you the definitions we uh, we plan the solutions and then we try to uh incorporate them in the following lessons and then obviously if it works fine we discussed if it still didn't bring the expected results we um we try to think of new solutions um you may ask uh if ask if we could talk about any specific situations i will tell you a few one of them our main interest is uh learner autonomy uh, we became interested in learning autonomy while uh, we were doing our deep diesel course and we started experimenting uh, with uh, activities to promote learning autonomy in in the classroom uh, at the beginning uh, not we are all, uh, we now more, uh, know much more about learning autonomy but at the very beginning we were not sure what things could work and the uh, responses of our students were very mixed because in Spain uh, students are not used to being autonomous they kind of rely on the teacher with all the explanation with all the corrections for writing so it wasn't an easy start but we started exchanging ideas for like we talk about the activities that work for our students and that actually helped us bring them closer to become more autonomous 
So that was one uh, good example. Another one, when we were doing our deep TESO, unit three, um, we had to, we were uh, teaching lessons that were observed by uh, some tutors. We were teaching the same group of students. Uh, it wasn't a, it, they were very nice and very talkative, but they were kind of mixed levels. Uh, so it wasn't easy to plan a lesson and we had to plan lessons from scratch. But altogether, we were trying, again, trying out different ideas. We're trying to be a little bit uh, innovative uh, with the lesson planning. And because we didn't know whether the things would uh, work uh, out or not, we could just go, obviously, and uh, try them during the lessons. But they were important lessons because we were being evaluated. So what we were doing, we were basically uh trying testing things or trying them out on each other so i would uh, say okay well how would you i would try to deliver an activity and patricia would be my uh guinea pig basically and uh, vice versa another thing uh was uh, when patricia last patricia focuses mo mostly on teaching business english Mm -hmm. But last year she had uh, some lessons at university. If I remember correctly, uh, the top number was 80. Yeah, so, well, I had 80 students in a class, but then, uh, yeah, we cut them down until, well, basically I had 37 people in a class with 37 different levels of English. So that was very difficult. So what I brought the issue to the meeting saying okay what well, how can I deal with these people 37 students various teachers sent a class uh, uh, and 30 different level 37 different levels so um well we came up with you know trying different things trial errors and we came up with task-based learning lessons and actually it worked fine, yes, because, uh, well, we, we could identify the weak students, uh, the struggling ones and the strongest ones and so on, and they were very motivated to work uh, in groups, yeah. So, yeah, so this is the sort of things that we talk about when we meet, yeah. All right, move on. So, um. The, this quotation here summarizes what we feel is an effective way of professional development. Collaboration becomes the nexus of teachers' professional development and reflection. So you've got teacher teachers' professional development, reflection with collaboration. So we believe it's, it's a great uh, quotation. And uh, because Improving our practice is important for its personal growth and satisfaction for finding alternative ways to what we take for granted. But we also need to consider our students' learning. Yeah. But so by dedicating to reflective practices, we can help our students become the best they can be. And also we can create rewarding teaching experiences and professional experiences. Um, and this is what we've we have been doing uh, with Ola so far, and it's the experience has been great, really. So what we especially want to encourage you to do after this talk is getting involved into collaborative reflective practice. We are not saying that is the answer to all the questions, and we are far from saying that it is surely going to work for you yet. It has worked for us fantastically well, and we believe it's worth trying. Okay. <laughs> right. I, mean, I don't know why that happened. Not sure about that, but just carry okay. on. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, so we were saying that we, we are encouraging you to collaborate with another teacher colleague, right? Um, ideally, somebody that uh, a trusted teacher friend that is around somebody you feel comfortable with or somebody that you consider that is a reflective person you say hey why don't we get together once a month for example to talk about different things why not so this is what we did with uh and it doesn't have to be physically, the person doesn't have to be physically around. You can meet online as well. For example, with um, Ula and I started our Deep Tea Soul. Uh, we didn't know that we 
lived in the same city and just for various reasons we met online and then at one point we said okay let's have a coffee together and meet up and so we've been doing this and and ever since we've been doing uh we've been meeting and reflect being reflective and um sometimes we cannot meet physically then we meet online um so we're working together as well in different projects so you you have opportunities yes and so and get what is i think what is more important is get engaged in some more of structure con uh, structure meetings uh, when you can discuss what happens in your class and then share ideas how to solve these problems right so we are confident we are confident there is a lot of truth in this old saying that two heads three or four are better than one and especially in our job the power in development in lies in collaboration and sharing so uh, <clears throat> I yes. just want to add one thing to finding this critical friend. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. I actually seen a comment here in the chat that in Italy, the teachers are very competitive. And I think in Spain as well, and well, this is a bigger discussion also about uh, native speakers and non-native speakers, but this is not the topic of, of, uh, of this presentation. Um, but in my school, I wasn't able to find a colleague uh, in the school that I work. We are good friends uh, and we go out for a drink or for dinner and we celebrate uh, birthdays together. But I wasn't able to find a person that I really trusted to tell them about uh, things that didn't go well uh, in my lessons. We all try to be uh, the best. We, uh, we try to show that we are the best teachers we are. Um, so it might take a while. It's it's not that easy. I think you have to click with a person, and uh, and you really have to uh, have confidence in this person. It took me a few years to find uh, Patricia, and as she said. Um, it was just kind of a random thing. We went for a coffee, we started talking, we had some things in common and some past experiences. Um, maybe also because we don't work in the same school, so we are not direct uh, competitors, um, but we had certain things in common. Uh, what could be, uh, an, uh, I don't know how to tell you where to find uh, this person, I guess joining teach, teaching communities, or if you have any Instagram or Facebook page, maybe you can just start um, talking to some people and see with who you get on well. It's something very, it's difficult to, to, to call it or to feel it because it's, I don't think it's very tangible, but um, it, it was great for us. We've been, we've known each other now for uh, three years. And as I said, I have a, deeper professional connection with Patricia than with some colleagues I've been working uh, with for eight years. Um, but you have to reach out to people. Obviously, if you stay um, at home and you don't try to make those connections, and I think conferences could be, a, 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 um, webinars like this could be a good way just to, to, to start. And hopefully you find a person with the same interests, maybe like uh, in our case, uh, learner autonomy. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to say it's not easy uh, to find a critical friend because it's not a person cr who criticizes you and says this is wrong, this is wrong, uh, but it's a person who most of everything uh, will offer you support. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, just just so following up what Ulla has just said, maybe it's a good idea not uh, to find uh, this friend a critical friend not in your context maybe in another context so the person is more objective yes and can give you more objective ideas why not it's it's an idea yeah yeah so shall we go to questions uh, and answers oh, maybe uh well thank you very much uh, everybody for being here uh, with us and showing interest in uh, reflective practice and yeah, we are very happy uh, to answer any questions that you have for us. And I can see there are some already. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Patricia and Ola. Uh, so interesting and inspiring. 
<laughs> and um, it's just it's so nice to see you thinking of it as a as a thing that you do with another person, um, because we often think of reflection as being very kind of alone and inward, don't we? And also, I think in general, teaching can feel a bit lonely. There's just there's you and your students, um, but you're rarely with another teacher actually practicing together. So um, I love that and all the benefits that you've explained to us. Really, really inspiring. And we've got lots of questions. So if it's OK with you. Um, sure. I'm going to start firing some at you. If you see any particular question in the um, Q&A, by the way, that you would really like to answer, then um, you can choose them as well. So I've got a question here from um, my Al Al, -Al class that says, um, can reflective practice be in groups so that teachers or students evaluate themselves and others? Um, Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go. Obviously, it can. Uh, we mentioned that the collaborative reflective practice is either critical friendship, which we were uh, talking about today, but also it could be group meetings. The problem I see with it is that uh, arranging a group can be quite tricky. And then, at least in my case, I feel Mm, more, uh, I feel sometimes shy talking about my issues with other teachers. With Patricia, is I trust her, so I know exactly this question about competition, maybe, or just me looking as less experienced versus another teacher. So yeah, but amazing. Uh, this is another way of um, of reflecting um, groups. If you can arrange a group of teachers um who are equally passionate and teachers you can trust i think that's great the problems i see it's probably more difficult to arrange sometimes for us uh to do it on a regular basis we try but to do it on a regular basis um can be difficult for, fortunately we have zoom we have teams so it, when patricia goes home to uruguay and i go home to poland it's not a problem but with more teachers uh it can be, <laughs> I, I imagine. Yes. Okay. So it might be slightly. Sorry, I would, I would like to add that, um, like, there are two phases. One is being reflective in your teaching, and also teaching students how to be reflective on their on their learning as well. So it's two different things, but all of them become a whole thing as well. Because if you are reflective, then you teach your students how to reflect. And therefore you have feedback and so on. So it's like a circle and obviously helps everybody. You, you, the teacher, the learners as well. So it works well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, thank you both. Um, actually, I'm, I'm wondering about how, do you ever ask your students for that to kind of to get information for for yourself and for your own reflection um do you have any any tips for kind of asking students point of view on how the lesson has gone uh, personally i ask the students uh, for feedback every now and then also because my class i don't use books for classes so i need their feedback i need at the beginning of the, the because it's business classes at the beginning of the the, the course I do a thorough needs analysis. And then after, let's say a month or two months, I ask them how to reflect on their learning as well. And you know, if they want certain kind of um, activities, because these, these, the English will reflect on their work as well. So luckily they are motivated because they need English for their work. So I'm constantly asking, in different ways, but I'm constantly asking students uh, for feedback, to reflect, uh, yes, also reflect on their learning. I think it's quite important because I work with, with adults and I think it's, let's say, easier um, to reflect if we are adults, but you can do yeah. it with children as well. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to add also that reflection is part of developing learning autonomy. So actually there's a lot of reflection in uh, my lessons. Uh, about uh, the learnings, the way they learn, and also about, I ask them about me, whether the activities work out, uh, whether they enjoy them. Uh, but some students, it also needs, uh, we also need a, a to teach students uh, how to reflect. 
that was many years ago, but I had, uh, before I um, started thinking more seriously about my teaching, but I had students who complained that uh, we had no speaking in lessons. So the director of studies came to uh, my class, observed my class, and he's well, it was like speaking all the time. Just my students like didn't realize that, I don't know, starting the class, okay, tell me about your weekend. Uh, that was speaking. So the advice was, <laughs> and I don't know, discussing um, the reading that we just did uh, in purse, they didn't read. And then as, as class, they didn't realize it was speaking. So the advice from my director of studies was, oh, I just tell them, this is speaking now, we are practicing speaking and don't change anything. And it worked. So I think that uh, obviously students give us, can give us a lot of uh, useful information in their feedback. But not always. If I ask my teenagers these days, they probably want to play. If I say like, what could you improve with the lessons? It could be probably uh, I I can I can tell you that it would be well, playing more uh, games, Kahoot, Bamboozle, and all these things. So I teach my students how to reflect and think about their teaching more. But it's also a process. Like it's a process mm -hmm. here with reflecting on us and uh, teaching students how to reflect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's so much here and it's such a rich topic, isn't it? Because we're talking about with the focus is mainly on like, reflecting on your own practice and then the feedback you get from students can help you uh, inform that. And then separately, we also are well, separately, but kind of part of the whole team collaboration. We want to encourage students to, to reflect. Mm -hmm. um, OK, but I like this idea of, of doing it regularly because often feedback from the course or whatever is at the end, isn't it? It's too late. So your point exactly. is if, yeah. to change, to introduce any changes. And uh, yeah. it also uh, it depends on uh, what day you do, if it's after the exam or the good day. So I think like uh, just it's like final exam sometimes doesn't reflect uh, the knowledge of the students. And I think just one final feedback doesn't reflect if the whole year was uh, productive. And uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I feel like I do it probably with some groups once a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, That's different great. ways. Uh, also different ways. I think this is important. Uh, so it's not always the same. Sometimes they they have kind of freedom to add, to just write how they feel about the lesson. Sometimes it's more uh, like I use lots of online uh, tools, Slido and Padlet. So they also uh, don't see it as a, like a oh, boring task at the end of the lesson, five minutes before we get home, but uh, different ways, different stages of the lesson. Right. Yeah, and also with yeah. different levels and children as well. So instead of using long sentences, obviously they won't be able to produce, but maybe pictures how they feel about the class uh, or their favorite, uh, their favorite word. Yeah, or writing down or posted their favorite sentences of the month or something that they liked, something that they didn't know before and now they know. Well. I think it's a good way to vary the activities as well. And the good thing is that you can do it in every level with every age. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is so interesting. Let's go back to the topic of um, reflective practice for our, ourselves. So there's a really interesting question here from uh, Almudena Santos, who I'm not sure if Almudena, if you're a, uh, an ex student of mine, your name is very familiar. Hello, <laughs> if it's you, and hello to Almudena. Um, even if it's not my old student. So she says, I'm a, a Spanish future uh, English foreign language teacher. I'm studying a master's for being a teacher for second year students. Um, I'll be in practice for the first time in front of 30 students teaching English, and I'm a little scared. <laughs> um, so she says, what do you think about um, reflective practice with an experienced teacher together with a new one like me? That's great. Exactly. Yes. I mean, the more experienced teacher will give you, will, will give Amudena more ideas and different points of views and perspectives. Uh, but nevertheless, trust your guts, trust your instincts as well. Right. For me, for example, as I mentioned before, I used to work with these 37 students, university students, and they were you know, between 18, 22 years old. So I consider them teenagers. Um, 
So at the beginning, the first month was so stressful for me. Um, and I, we, Will and I came up with this idea of working on TBL, task-based learning, right? Something that they didn't know, they didn't, uh, they, I think they weren't used to work, to work on with this type of activity. So I did a lot of group work, pair work, um, more something more dynamic. And because I didn't want to be the center and I wanted to have uh, learner center activities. Um, so yeah, why not? I know 30 students sounds, ooh, yes, <laughs> scary. But yes, I'm sure you can do it, Alvina, for sure. Oh, oh. I, think, I think collaboration, uh, um, well, in our case, we have uh, more or less the same uh, experience. I think it's, but it doesn't matter. The only risk I can see that I sometimes an experienced teacher might feel more like a mentor. What we, uh, which, which is also not wrong, but um, we have to establish maybe what relationship we, we want to have. And as I say, in our case, we are equal. I mean, we learn from each other, we get different perspectives, but we are on a, we are equal. Uh, whereas uh, here, it depends whether you want a coach or a mentor or, uh, and just getting some advice or you want to uh, learn from each other. I watched some time uh, ago, uh, peer observation by um, video, I think it's available on YouTube by Ana Garcia Stone. She was uh, the experienced one with a uh, newly qualified, and she did peer observation with newly qualified teacher. She said she learned a lot uh, from, the, from the new teacher. So it's a way, but I think it needs establishing what we want, what you want from each other. But anyway, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you both. It's really interesting what you're saying about the difference between there's different relationships that can really help you. So a more mentor type relationship. But from what you're saying, I understand that the, the freedom of it being someone who is a peer that has a similar level of experience has helped you kind of share things that you feel, oh, that's not gone so well, or be more open, perhaps. Mm -hmm. yes. Exactly. Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay, so again on the subject of uh, finding this person, because this seems to be a, an important part of getting this to work, um, Harry Yanto says, I also agree that it's not easy to find a critical friend around um, in our kind of work circle. Um, my, my critical friend is also someone who is working in another institution. Um, do you think this is only suitable for finding a match in similar things that you are doing? Or can you find someone that's doing something slightly different, but that is um, still a good partner? Uh, I, I think we answered this before, but uh, yeah, why, why not? Ulla and I worked in different contexts mm -hmm. uh, and still we learn from each other. And um, Yes, why not? <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly. So do you think the term is only suitable for me? Um, yeah, we... At we least have, the person have, has to be a teacher, of course, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's not, it's not a, from a different uh, business or... <laughs> we we work in different we live in the same city we have things in common similar views similar professional interest but as we mentioned patricia is uh, more into business i i teach mainly in a language academy uh so our context uh very, I, I do have experience with business uh, english as well and patricia has experience with uh teaching learning but i think it doesn't matter as well as we are we have something in common, at least some uh, interest, and we know about each other context. Um, I think it's 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 a different perspective. It's a fresh view. So I might yeah. work uh, fine. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So um, another good question here that I'm sure a lot of people will relate to um, from Andrea Noeli. Um, do you have any suggestions about how to allocate sufficient time for thoughtful self-assessment amidst uh, a teacher's busy schedule? Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, yes, that's another problem. Uh, <laughs> but I think uh, I actually watched uh, a few days ago, I watched a video about time management. And this uh, man was saying that if you want to do something, you will always find we are always master of our times. And if you want to do something, you will have time to do it. 
Uh, so in our case, as we try to do it on a regular basis. It works sometimes better or less. I was now two months in the UK in the summer and during the summer and we we communicated, but not <laughs> not that uh, as much as we normally do. Uh, but we try, we try to find like uh, at least once a month uh, this um, to do this critical session. Uh, maybe it helps us that also that we are friends. Um, so sometimes we just go out, and as I mentioned, we always end up whether we go for a hike or to the beach. We, we always talk about teaching in the end. But for the structure one, well, we don't also see it as an obligation. Um, that's what we were trying to do uh, to say in our session. Like we are generally interested in professional development. So this is not a chore to, okay, I have this one hour meeting now with Patricia. We usually prepare brunch, sometimes at my place, sometimes at Patricia. Uh, we have it and we work like this when we were doing our deep tea, so studying for the exam. Uh, that's what I will weekly Saturday or Sunday meetings and we always found those few hours uh, because we prioritize it basically and now it's 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 the same it's not as often because in the past it was once a week very regular now uh, it's once a month if we can't because of our different timetables as well actually I work in the evenings Patricia usually in the mornings and afternoon we, we zoom as we zoomed uh, mm-hmm. when was the last yeah. time we zoomed on on Thursday to rehearse yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Also, I think uh, talking about time management, if you have something sh- scheduled for you block it from your calendar. So you know that this is really important for you. It's like whatever you are, pro- what you have to prioritize. If, are you prioritizing teacher development, your uh, activities, exercises or what? you know, sport, whatever, whatever you prioritize, this is, and then I, something that I want to mention is that also you can do your own reflection after a class and write some, if it works for you, I think every teacher has to find their own ways, yeah, Um, I write things on my notebook, for example, yes, this, just briefly, you know, just chop down ideas so it's not to forget, and then I can get to talk to Ulla about it, for example. So I've got this issue to talk about next meeting. Okay, let's talk about this, la, la, la. Try to find different ways. Try to find theory behind it. What things we can try, what things may work, may not work. Innovative ways of dealing with certain issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Thank you both. And when you start saying, okay, we're, you know, we're dedicating time and it doesn't feel like a chore, as soon as you call it brunch, uh, <laughs> it sounds like a, a delightful plan. Um, and, and as you're saying, we often, a, a lot, we're doing a lot of reflection, I think, anyway, it depends on the teacher, but you know, you, you are thinking, oh, that class, you know, if something doesn't go well, or you're c- concerned about a student or whatever, you are kind of thinking about what's going on there and how to remedy that. So maybe it's just kind of sharing the problem with someone else that's the thing we, we need to take time for. Exactly. And sometimes my best ideas... I came up with my best ideas while in the shower or listening to a song or on the way to the beach, for example, right, on the motorbike. So, yeah, I think sometimes you you have this problem, you, this issue that you really want to solve, uh, and then you say, okay, just let it go, and then the answer will come to you, mm-hmm. either in the name of a friend or a critical friend or you coming across with another people's problem. So, yeah, you'll find the solution for sure. Yeah. I just wanted to add one thing that we don't always discuss uh, because reflection happens very often when we are when something goes wrong. And actually, that's what we were talking about. But it's not in our case. And I think it's also important that we don't only consider things. So we don't only turn to critical uh, uh, to reflection. Uh, when things go wrong sometimes it's good to also analyze the things okay they went well so why did they go well what happened that it was it was just the day (laughs) the stars or actually something that they did and then we shared the idea so um well in my if i if i had a great activity a great lesson plan i can share it with patricia then she can decide if she wants to follow it the way she wants or uh, yeah, she, she the way I did, or she can tweak it her way. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think it's also important to to analyze the good things, like the same way when it comes to my running. When I did the twenty one k, I was like, okay, so what did I eat on that morning? 
and what uh, what was I eating the day before and how did I train I think this is also important so it's not only the bad things uh, yeah. went wrong but good things are worth uh, reflecting on as well yeah definitely thank you I yeah I love that point because uh, we try to do it for our students don't we tell them the good as well as the bad but I don't know about other people that the voice in my head that's kind of critical which is good because it helps you improve but it often focuses on the bad things so yeah let's remember to to think about what's gone well um I remember that too mm -hmm. okay well I'm afraid we don't have time for any more questions thank, thank you so much because it's such an interesting topic um and people I can tell people are really really interested in it it's really inspiring to hear about your relationship and how you've helped each other and and how much it's helped you professionally um so thank you for coming today Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for everybody. And just, I would like to add that if we haven't answered some of the questions here, you can reach us, to, uh, can I say this, Joan, um, to our emails addresses. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send us an email and we'll be very happy to answer. Exactly. Uh, second that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's absolutely great. So there's also lots of information in the handout. Don't forget, you can watch the recording of the webinar when it goes up there. Uh, it'll probably be there on the website uh, from next week, from Tuesday. Definitely, it will be there. Um, so we're going to take a short break, 15 minutes until the next session starts. And the next session follows really well from this one um, with Cecilia Nobre. It's using video based observations for self-directed development. So I hope you can all uh, stick around for that one too. So thank you, everybody. See thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you both.